is Sebastian Middle Martinez for MMA News here with Martin Hamlet, who faces Corey Hendricks at PFL Season 2021 Part 5 on June 17th. So, Martin, you are you are in Las Vegas. You've been there for quite a while, and you're getting quite used to life over in the U.S., it seems like. Uh, how has your training been so far uh, over in the U.S.? Yeah, I've been in the U.S. for eight weeks now. So the first three weeks was in Atlantic City preparation for the first fight. And after uh, I flew to, um, uh, to Vegas and uh, have been here, yeah, training here for five weeks. So the training has been good. The weather is good. So, so yeah, uh, I feel the preparation for the, my upcoming fight has been, uh, uh, as I planned, uh, as very good, uh, very good. And it's not always nice to see some Scandinavian solidarity, yeah, especially abroad. Uh, as you recently said, you've been training with uh, Sadi Boussi and Ilir Latifi, uh, and uh, I saw some pictures of Jack Hermanson as well. Uh, what do you feel those fighters, uh, specifically Latifi and Sadugu uh, and, uh, and Jack, those sort of Swedish-connected fighters, do you have a, a good connection with them in terms of training, and what do you feel that they give you? Yeah, um, me and Jack is uh, um, teammates from the beginning. He was at my first fight, he was helping me corner and everything. Uh, Sadugu have been training with us in, in Oslo. Uh, I didn't know Ilir. So the first time I met uh, Ilir was here, but we, our connection uh, connection was good uh, at the beginning. So we we have um, had some good sessions uh, together. So um, and I I'm lucky to be a part of his uh, team for this uh, upcoming fight, and we'll help him with uh, the warm up and stuff like that. So now I'm in the UFC hotel and quarantine before uh, bef before his fight. And seeing as this is the first time you've uh, met Dealer, he is known. He was used to be called the the lifting or like sort of like the crane, as in one of those cranes that lifts heavy things. The crane from Rosengold because of how strong he is. Uh, have you felt his strength yet? Yeah, he's he's a monster. <laughs> he's a one hundred ten kilo monster. Uh, I, I I did know him from uh, wrestling, and we have uh, a lot of common friends. So we had a lot of speak of and um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so I remember uh, I'm a wrestler. He's a wrestler, uh, but I never felt that power in the wrestling before. And uh, he's got a fight coming up, a, a very important fight too, because he's actually on a, on a losing streak right now in the UFC. After having trained with him quite extensively, what do you make of his forms uh, in the stage of his career? No, I think it, it is a very important fight for him. Uh, he's turning 39 now, I mm -hmm. think. And uh, but I never seen his his. I am actually a little surprised about his shape. Uh, I didn't expect him to be uh, this good shape. Uh, like it, it's different to be a heavyweight and light heavyweight. Mm -hmm. But he he have conditioning for uh, for uh, light heavyweight as well now. So it was. Uh, he looks slim, but he's 110 kilo strong and what do you think of his chances against tanner bozer this weekend oh, oh worst case it will be a decision win but uh, i think he will uh, he will he looks very explosive now so i won't be shocked if it if, if it ends before the before the first or second round okay well that's definitely something the swedish fans want to hear uh you guys have obviously a very nice fan base in norway as well but i can imagine it's maybe a little frustrating that you know the laws and regulations still prohibit mma competition in norway and then recently they legalized bare knuckle boxing which i think a lot of people were very surprised by uh you know because there's so many uh, graphic injuries and cuts and it's it's so much more bloody than mma uh what do you make of sort of the overall s legislative uh, state of mma right now in, in norway now, hopefully it's it's a pro it's a process, but hopefully it will be legal. Uh, but I don't I don't think it will be legal before uh, a couple of years. I think it's a it's a long process. But we are used to compete uh, outside the, of the Scandinavia, outside of Nordic, uh, and uh, and of course Norway. So since since uh, since I was wrestling, I haven't been competing so much in uh, in Norway. Still, when I was wrestling, it was just the Norwegian Championship, and then I was outside in the world. 
So, uh, but uh, hopefully we can uh, we can follow the other Scandinavian uh, lands and um, the countries, and and we can uh, make it legal and uh, have events there. There's a bit of a negative stigma sometimes towards martial artists and especially MMA fighters. Like even you know MMA is legal in Sweden, but I have some relatives here who, when I visit them on you know Christmas and stuff on that, they're like, oh, "Why do you?" follow such a brutal sport it's cage fighting and things like that but you guys are training a brutal sport in a country where it's illegal so what is the how do people see mma fighters in norway well, we had uh, i think uh, a lot of people are watching it and follow that sport because jack have made uh, a way there and um, and aml so, so we we are more recognized there, and uh, I, I feel like pe- people are is uh, appreciating uh, that our, our job. Okay, well, glad to hear that uh, the fans have a little bit more sense than the politicians do in that case. So yeah. you've got a big fight <laughs> coming up uh, against Corey Hendricks, but if we bounce back a little bit, you made your PFL debut earlier this year in April, uh, at the end of April against Dan Spahn, a very experienced guy, and choked him out in the second round. Uh, looking back, what do you make of that performance, and you know how do you sort of look at it? Uh, I felt like um, coming coming into US, I have to perform at the first beginning, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, the first fight I can't not lose. It was, um, it was, uh, you know, I, I came in here six one, so I need to make a, I needed to make a statement, and and uh, and that was exactly what I did. So, um, so I feel, I feel like when I was still was six one, um, I trained with Jack, and I know how good I can be at my best. So, so I felt like I was little underdog there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but after that fight, I now now people um, have been watching and uh, and will I think they will not be surprised uh, if I end uh, Corey uh, quickly also. Yeah, I mean you've got I feel like based on your last <coughs> performance, you've definitely got the odds on your side. Uh, and looking at Corey, you know what do you make of him as an opponent? He's been a little bit up and down. He's competed quite a bit in Russia. He's faced some actually pretty solid competition over there. But you know he's uh, he's like two and two in his last four fights. How do you see him as an, as an opponent? Uh, um, yeah, he he came in as an alternate. So uh, I I have have to be honest. If I can't beat this guy, I I don't think I have nothing to do in the PFL. So I also need uh, I need at least a decision to to go to the semifinal. So hopefully, yeah. To be honest, I, I know how good I am. So at my bad baddest day, I, I will still uh, still um, beat him. So hopefully, hopefully, I can I can end this quick and just go home to my family again. You know. And one thing that I feel stands out about the PFL is the way they sort of run this season tournament style, kind of like, you know, World Cup in football where you collect the points. And that's been something, whereas when I've pitched the PFL to like my casual friends who don't really know much outside the UFC, and I tell them like, think like, you know, like World Cup in football, but with MMA and the tournaments, and they are like, oh, I get that, because, you know, I follow Champions League and this and that. And it seems like it's a very easy way to sort of, uh, explain and bridge that gap between hardcore and casual fans. Uh, what do you think about PFL system? Because a lot of people seem to be enjoying it. Do you think more uh, organizations should adopt some kind of similar system? Um, yeah, um, the the good thing about it is that um, is that you can always know when you have fights. Of course, the bad things is injury comes and goes. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know when the days come, you have to be ready. Um, if you have an injury, a small injury, you still have to, you still have to compete and uh, and do the job because yeah, it's 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 also your work, you know. Uh, yeah. That's the way you get money in. So uh, so I, I like the system. I like the, that you don't need to talk to get any fights, uh, act um, to get any fights. It's a competition, so. You win, you go, you advance. So I, I, I love that. 
It seems like a system more suited to you. You don't seem like the kind of style to put on a Colby Covington style persona and call people out with half naked models on Instagram or anything like that. No, I feel like uh, it's it's good to you know let the result the talks and uh, of course you you have to promote yourself and stuff like that. But I think that that can come later in the career. Uh, for example, in the UFC, you have to make a name and stuff. But for now, I just need to concentrate about uh, getting better, get the wins, um, get to the final, um, win the PFL, and then then everything else will will just come. And so, running off, then, what would you say to the fans? What should they expect of your upcoming bout with Corey Hendricks on June seventeenth? I think they can uh, expect, uh, actually, I think they can expect two different scenarios. It's the one, it's that I will knock him out in the, um, in the stand-up. Uh, because, I, because I have had heavy hands and I think if I connect, uh, it, will, it will go down. And the other is that it will be a decision win, you know. <laughs> so once again, decision so is the worst case scenario. Decision is the worst case. So I think I, worst case, I will, will grind me through that fight and and, and get it. Uh, the best case is that I, I will connect uh, with my stand up and uh, and um, and knock him knock him out. But I feel like it's it's time to it's time to let his uh, hands fly and uh, and legs and and uh, I feel like I really want to show them that I can knock people out in stand-up also. Well, it seems like a perfect opportunity. I feel like the tide is on your side. And if there is a time for that elusive first-round knockout, this might very well be the fight that it occurs in. So fans at home, be sure to tune in when Martin Hamlet collides with Corey Hendricks at PFL number 5 of the 2021 season, June 17th. Uh, Martin, thank you very much for the time, and good luck in the fight. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day.